Welcome to the Fall Acrylic Portrait Painting Challenge Masterclass Lesson Number One, Preparing Your Painting Surface. Glad to have you here. I'm excited to teach another series of Masterclass lessons here for you here at Realistic Acrylic Portrait School. Um, it's, it's awesome that the seasons are changing. Summer is coming to a close. In fact, as I record this, you probably hear a cricket and crickets only come out in August, as we head into September, uh, even more of them. And my studio has its share of crickets, but I'm so glad you're here. And what I'm gonna be doing is taking you through step-by-step -step process of painting an acrylic portrait you can be proud of. Um, we have the painting here from last year. Man, the years go by fast. This is a portrait of Maka that we did for the Fall Portrait Challenge last year a 16 by 20 acrylic on canvas. I think we had over uh, 1,600 artists take the challenge and it was so awesome to see so many versions of this painting. In fact, some people have never painted a portrait in their life. They had never ever painted an acrylic portrait. Uh, did the portrait of Maka and then that just kind of spearheaded them in, gave them a springboard step into painting portraits, um, doing commission projects, and gave them an incredible amount of confidence and just the knowledge that they can paint a portrait and they can do it well. And you can do the same thing. I'm going to teach you how to do this step by step. Now, I do want to make it clear as we do these lessons that the first two lessons, so this would be lesson one, lesson number two, uh, will be available here um, for free and I'm making that available within the YouTube channel. I email the lessons out to you. Um, and then after that, I will have more lessons available at Realistic Acrylic Portrait School um, when you sign up for the premium version of the Masterclass lessons here for the challenge. But for now, I'd just like you to sign up for the free version of the challenge. I'm going to take you through the process of um, preparing your, your painting surface and then doing the grid, getting an accurate sketch so that you know when you have that accurate sketch, that good foundation to paint upon, you'll be able to do the painting part uh, with confidence. But go ahead, sign up for the challenge. Um, it is free. You can sign up at fall, or I should say actually realisticacrylic.com uh, forward slash fall dash acrylic dash portrait dash painting dash challenge. Now when you sign up, I'm going to send you um, all of the things you need to get started with the painting. I'll send you a welcome kit and that includes uh, the gridded reference photo, uh, the, the full resolution reference photo without the grid so you can put that onto your Kindle or your iPad, set it up right next to your canvas and paint along with us. I'm also going to send you the supplies list so you know exactly what you need to be able to paint this portrait with us. And I'll send you the palette layout guide so you know how to lay out your colors on the palette so you don't get muddy mixtures and chalky skin tones. Um, and then also the tentative masterclass lesson schedule uh, so you can keep on track with the other students. Now, this is self-paced, so you don't feel like, you know, you have to do it with everyone, you know, at the same time they're painting. If you fall behind a little bit, it's not a big deal. Um, these lessons are available, like I said here, the first two lessons um, for free on my YouTube channel, the lessons after that within Realistic Acrylic Portrait School. And so never feel like um, you have to uh, be painting simultaneously the same things other students are doing. You can get caught up. Uh, but I'm excited to teach you the process. So today, today we're going to be working on the painting surface. And before I even begin that, I would like to ask a blessing on this class because God knows I can't do this in my own ability. I need his help to teach you well. And I want to pray for you because God is the master artist. He created the whole world and he's going to be able to help you as well uh, to paint a portrait, to use that talent he's given you, even if you're not sure it's there yet. Um, he's going to help you to be able to paint a portrait you can be proud of. And so let's pray. Uh, Father, I do ask a blessing on this class. I pray that you would enable me to teach this uh, challenge well, be able to teach um, the step-by-step -step process of painting this portrait. And Lord, I do ask a blessing on each and every student that you would enable them to do it with excellence. Uh, Lord, that you would 
help them to follow the steps, to have confidence as they paint, and just to uh, bless them in the process. If they can paint a portrait, they can be proud of it. It would spearhead and, and just uh, springboard them into doing more portraits, portraits of their uh, loved ones, maybe portraits of grandchildren, uh, portraits of friends and family, portraits on commission, or even paintings that they can put up for exhibition and sell. Lord, I just ask a blessing on the students. Bless this class in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so just uh, to let you know, this is the portrait for last year. We're not going to be painting this one again, but I do have the whole master class series here uh, where you can watch them in my YouTube channel and see how we did that if you'd like to paint Maka. But this year we're going to be painting uh, a different portrait. I haven't given her a name yet. I think we'll need to come up with a name for her. Um, but uh, we're going to be doing this on hardboard. So it's going to be a little bit different. And I, I wanted to try hardboard because um, it allows you to get a smoother painting surface. In other words, your glazes will apply much more evenly. Uh, you don't have to overcome the texture of the canvas trying to get the paint to fill in the, the warp and weave of that fabric. But rather with this smooth surface, it's, all, it's almost like glass, uh, your, your glazes are going to apply very easily. So you'll be able to get a much smoother uh, texture um, and you'll be able to get more detail as well. So we're going to do this um, for this particular challenge. We're going to use hardboard. And hardboard is something that you can purchase at your local home improvement store. Um, it used to be called Masonite panel, but it is um, very, very smooth. It's uh, 1 8 inch thick, so it's very thin. And it's uh, pressed, basically particle board. It's not MDF. Now some people use MDF medium density fiberboard to paint on, uh, but this is a little bit different. This is a uh, hardboard and the particles are, are much smaller and it's compressed to a smoother surface. Uh, it's also more archival than MDF. MDF has more acidity in it and over time that can degrade the quality of the paint adhering to the surface. Um, so we're going to get into the preparing the surface uh, part of this painting process. And uh, if you don't happen to have hardboard, if you, you can't get your hands on it, I know I have students all over the world and some are down under, they are not able to get some of the supplies that we can get in Canada or the US or the UK. Um, if you're not able to get hardboard, you can use canvas, excuse me. Uh, you can just use your traditional stretch canvas um, and the size that we're going to be doing is a 16 by 20, 16 by 20 hardboard. Uh, but if you don't have hardboard, just use canvas. And um, also for the supplies that you're going to need for preparing the surface, um, if you don't have all the supplies, I'll show you how to do this successfully anyway. But let's go over to my table. I'm going to show you um, how to prepare the surface. Um, but just make sure that you have a 16 by 20 piece of hardboard. Um, like I said, go to your local home improvement store. They can cut it for you oftentimes um, to size from a four foot by eight foot sheet. And you can get a lot of different sizes, 16 by 20, 24 by 30, 18 by 24. You can get some standard sizes um, out of that four by eight sheet. Um, but once you have your 16 by 20 hardboard, um, go ahead, we're gonna start on that process. I'll show you how to do it, how to prepare this for painting. Let's move over to the table. All right, so what you want to do for this step is to lay your piece of hardboard flat on a table. And again, verify that it is 16 by 20. You can just measure it um, with your measuring tape or ruler. And yep, 16 by 20. Um, and these are the supplies that I have. I have a face mask, I have a sanding block with 150 grit sandpaper. Uh, you could also use 220, that would be fine. I have a 3 inch flat brush. It's just a Golden Taclon artist brush. Uh, we'll use that for applying the primer and the gesso. Uh, and then we have Bullseye 123 primer. Um, so this is Zinzer brand. Um, 
and you, you could also use kills, that would be fine. Any high quality water based primer will work. And there's another thing too that uh, in the past hardboard used to be uh, manufactured with linseed oil. They'd rub linseed oil over it or impregnate the wood with it to keep it from warping. Um, and so in the past a lot of artists used a primer over that just to overcome the slick surface of the oil because usually well always uh, acrylic will not adhere to anything with oil on it latex acrylic doesn't adhere so um, I also follow that same philosophy and would use um, Zinsser primer sealer on hardboard just to make double sure that uh, over time the paint would start to peel off um, I was doing a little research though and I found out that um, these days hardboard is not impregnated with um, linseed oil like it used to be. They do put a linseed oil over the top but they um, fire it up to a really high temperature kind of a flash baking of that linseed oil so it really um, isn't present on the surface of the wood like it was in days gone by. And, and so all that to say if you don't have Zinsser primer or Kills or any other kind of primer um, you could actually just use gesso and that would be fine um, but you do want to sand the surface first it's just a good idea just to scuff it up a little bit with sandpaper um, so regardless I'm still going to use sandpaper just to make sure because sometimes you have little scratches and divots in there um, and the edge can be a little rough depending on how it was cut and so you'll want to uh, to sand that out. By the way if you're not able to get a piece of hardboard um, cut to size by um, a lumber yard or home improvement center or you don't have a table saw at home or a shop nearby uh, it is actually possible to cut it with a knife. Um, of course you want to use gloves for that. I have some high quality leather gloves. I'm not going to show you how to do it but uh, if you needed to, you could use a utility blade and score uh, the edges a few times, probably about five to ten times, and then um, just snap it off. Uh, you can do that when it's thin like this. Uh, but that uh, is a little riskier when you're dealing with blades, so it's not recommended. Um, I would recommend to have this cut with a, a table saw by somebody skilled in doing that. So let's get to the part of the process where we sand the hardboard. And what you want to do is put on um, a dust mask and this is a N95. Uh, you could also use you know a cloth mask that people are using now uh, to protect against COVID-19. But uh, put on a mask just to uh, keep yourself from breathing any of the dust that's created by sanding the hardboard. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to take um, a sanding block and you just get a piece of uh, 150 grit sandpaper and poke it into both sides like that. And we just close this then. Sanding block makes it easy. And I'm just going to hold that sanding block uh, like this and sand across. Just work our way from top to bottom. And you'll see on this side some of the particles that we're sanding off right there. Especially the edges, it's good to sand those edges. Alright, that's all you need is just a little bit of sanding to sand the edges. It doesn't hurt to wear gloves when you're using sandpaper, you know, just so you don't end up sanding your fingers. So we'll just put on the gloves here for that. Any kind of gloves would work. You could use dishwashing gloves, anything like that. Just sand the edges a little bit to get the bird ends off and around it a little bit. Ok, 
Okay, and now with that being sanded, uh, the next step would be to make sure you get all the dust off. Um, so you can just use your brush and wipe that dust off the surface. And then take your brush and wipe that on a rag to make sure you don't have any dust on the bristles. And then after that, the next step will be to apply the primer. Okay, and now we're going to apply the primer uh, to the hardboard. So I had this primer all shaken up last night uh, from the home improvement store where I purchased it. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you either have the can shaken up recently or you stir it with a paint stir stick. And um, I have my flat brush, my three inch brush. Uh, you want to set your hardboard um, on top of something that uh, can get paint on it. I have some craft paper you could put down, plastic drop cloth, newspaper, uh, canvas, whatever you want to put down to protect the painting, or rather the table, uh, from the, the primer. So to start with, I'm going to dip this into the primer here. And I just want you to be able to see the can. I'm going to move it over a little bit. So I'm just going to dip that in just about that far in the bristles. Let it drip a little bit, turn it around. And we're going to start in the upper left corner, uh, maybe about a third of the way or quarter of the way from the edge. And we're, we're doing it that way so we don't get a bunch of drips. All right, so we apply this like that. Now we dip in again, shake it off a little bit. Flip it around, and we'll go and bring this over, meet that up to the edge, and just brush in the other direction to get it up onto the actual edge of the hardboard. And then we want to smooth this out. Brush it a little bit just to get that to smooth out well. Now we don't need a really thick coat here, just need enough to uh, basically cover the surface. And I'm going to smooth it out a couple of times with these brush strokes. Alright, that should be good. Now we're going to repeat the process. Go a little bit closer to the middle this time. And I don't need to re-dip my uh, brush into the can because I notice I had more than enough paint on on the hardboard. So again, we're just going to smooth this out, do some slight diagonal strokes, and then we just smooth it out like that. Okay, now let's keep the process going. About a third of the way over from the edge. Flip the brush over and continue smoothing out. And I'm wearing gloves, um, plastic gloves. You might want to do that as well just to protect your hands from any primer that might get on them. It is a little hard to get off because it's made to stick to anything. So these are just sandwich gloves. You can use any kind of gloves that you might have handy. Okay, one last time. Flip this over. I did get a little drip over there. I need to smooth that out. Depending on the humidity levels where you live, this might dry um, quicker. Here it's still pretty humid yet in Wisconsin, so it's going to dry a little slower for me. Just going to get the edges here. Smooth that out. I'm not going to go over the whole thing. Once that's brushed on there, I'm going to leave that be. 
I'm going to move this over though just a bit. Just slide it over so you don't have the paint that dripped off on the side sticking to the paper and sticking to the edge of your hardboard and then you'd have to tear it off and it would be kind of messy. So just kind of give it a little shove and move that over a bit and that will help. And that's it and then you basically just let it dry. Let it dry for uh, a couple of hours. Um, probably be good to let it dry for several hours or even overnight if you can. And then after that's done you can apply the gesso to it and that'll be the next step. So I'll, I'll see you in the next step. Oh and I just wanted to throw this in here. Um, if you're unable to get hardboard you know in the large sheets or just to make it easier on yourself um, you might be able to purchase hardboard um, pre-gessoed. Um, they sell it online in a lot of places Dick Blick, uh, Utrecht Art Supplies, Rex Art, Jerry's Artorama. Those are just a couple of different websites that come to mind where you can purchase pre-gessoed hardboard um, or you might have it at your local art store Michaels Hobby Lobby um, make it a lot easier and you won't have to spend as much time in prepping the surface. Um, if you are able to get your hands on some pre-gessoed hardboard you can skip ahead to the step where we apply uh, we actually do the grid and colored pencil and then just seal it in with matte medium and gesso. Um, you won't have to do the pre-prep like we're doing like I'll demonstrate to you but a lot of folks it seems like um, are going to have to purchase hardboard at their local home improvement store and that's why I'm going to show you how to do that, how to prepare the surface. Now before we do the gesso layer um, it's a good idea to put another layer of primer on the back side of the hardboard. Uh, this side here has dried enough that I can set it down. Uh, make sure when you set it down on your paper or whatever you have underneath it that there's um, no wet gesso there. Or, or no wet primer rather that'll get onto the surface and you know, cause issues. I just flip this paper over um, so just have a fresh piece of paper for that or flip it over and we're going to take the same brush and repeat that process from the previous step. And so what this will do is it'll keep it from buckling so much. You'll find that after you apply this first layer of primer that the board curls up just a little bit and it'll keep that from happening and not only that it'll also seal in some of the odor that's present in the hardboard. Whatever chemicals they use to process it I just it has a really strong smell and I don't really care for that smell and so when you apply this primer that will really help to mitigate that. It will just encapsulate the whole thing so that smell shouldn't be such an issue. So I'm just going to apply it. It's not critical to have a super smooth layer. But you will find that this primer uh, doesn't leave a lot of brush marks. It's uh, self leveling and that's something they add to the paint uh, to make to make the application smoother and so you won't find a lot of brush texture with this primer. Gesso on the other hand will have more of a brush texture and you'll have to sand that to get it really smooth. But you won't need to sand this at all. I'm just trying to get all the edges here. Okay we just smooth it out like so and everything should be encapsulated. And this is the back side. So you want to make sure you know which is the back side and which side is the front side. We'll just close that container up. And I would lift this away. Again, I'm using gloves just to keep that from getting on my fingers. Um, doesn't matter if paint get, gets on the back, but you don't want it getting on the front. So you had a little bit that just got on there. So you want to make sure you don't have any drips or anything that would cause issues uh, getting onto the front. I'm just rubbing a little bit of this excess um, primer onto the sides, making sure the sides are encapsulated as well. Just kind of flip this over. All right. 
Now I want to take this then and uh, set it somewhere to dry. So uh, you want to have a fresh piece of paper as you set this down again um, because you don't want it to disturb what you had on there originally. So I'm just going to get a fresh piece of paper here. And I'm going to set the uh, painting side down and the wet side up. And again, we'll just let that dry for a couple of hours, uh, preferably overnight before putting the gesso layer on. And I will see you in that step. Alright, a little change of pace. I want to use just a little more Zinzer, a little more of this primer. Um, the first coat looks so fantastic. It's just um, so smooth. I love the way it levels out with the self-leveling additive they put in the primer. I want to do another coat. So uh, let's do another coat of the primer uh, before we do the gesso. And I think we're going to get better results, be less sanding, less work. Uh, let's give that a shot. Put these uh, food preparation gloves back on. Any glove will do that you have. I just like these because they're disposable, super inexpensive. Put these gloves back on and crack open that uh, primer again. There we go. And we're going to take the three inch flat brush again, just like before. Do the same process and repeat. Look how smooth that is. It just dries so nice and smooth. <clears throat> Way less grooves from the brush texture than what you'd have with gesso. So I figured let's do this again. Give this one more coat. And we'll just repeat the process that we did in that first step. reload the brush. All right, now we're going to smooth out these brush strokes. All right, that's good. Now we'll just let this dry. And then also you do want to make sure that you just give that uh, surface a little shove and move it off the edge. You see all those drips there. If you don't do that, the drips are going to attach to the paper or whatever surface you have it on and it's going to create kind of a lumpy texture on the side. So just kind of give it a little shove so that the drips will detach from the surface and then let it dry. One of the things I didn't discuss was uh, how to open up a paint can I don't want to insult your intelligence, but just, just in case you haven't done this before, um, it's a good idea to use a paint can opener that works the best. And you just insert that underneath the can lid like this and just move that around, pull up, pull up, pull up, work your way around and it'll pop right open. And then if you don't have a paint can opener, which you can purchase these at hardware stores, if you don't have that, you can also use a flat edge screwdriver and that works just as well. Uh, you would just stick that in the crevice between the can lid and the side and just turn that clockwise like this. Turn it, turn it, work your way around. And it helps to have a wider screwdriver like this and then it'll pop right open. And then to seal the uh, paint can up, you can either use a mallet or you can use a hammer and a block of wood. And that'll keep the can from getting dented by the hammer head. So just go like this, pop it on either side. And uh, you might have to do it a couple of times if it doesn't seal right away. But 
it uh, should be able to tell if that's sealed. Yep, I can tell that's nice and tight. And there we go. All right, we're going to stop off here for the Portrait Painting Challenge Masterclass Lesson Number One, preparing your uh, painting surface. Uh, this is where we're at right now. We have the hardboard panel, the 16 by 20 hardboard panel, pre-sanded. Uh, we have two layers of um, Zinser Primer Sealer on it. Uh, we didn't need to sand um, in between the layers of the Zinser Primer Sealer because it's so smooth, it levels off so nice. Uh, it's just not necessary to sand. And I didn't sand that yet, but that will be coming up in the next lesson. So it'll be lesson number one, part two, where I'm going to show you how to sand uh, the gesso layer, prepare the grid, and then we'll be all set for lesson number two, which is the sketching process. So I'm excited to teach you that next step. For now, if you're not signed up for the challenge, go ahead and sign up. It's completely free. Uh, Realisticacrylic.com forward slash fall dash acrylic dash portrait dash painting dash challenge. Go ahead and sign up and paint this portrait with us. I'm excited to teach you the next steps here. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. God bless, and we'll talk to you soon.